Oh, am I allowed on the couch? I'm ready for my close-up. Gumby. Thank you. You're so handsome. Throughout this series, I've been asking you guys over on Instagram what you want to see. So we make sure we're answering any and all questions. And Katie Shannon had a great one asking about the composition of meals and meal timing around workouts. You might have also heard this referenced as peri-workout nutrition. So to break that down, it's really just looking at what you eat before, during, and after your workout. So let's dive into it. Now, before we get too into the weeds or too confusing, I want to emphasize that the most important thing here here is really hitting your overall macronutrients within a day. I think it's important to recognize that you're not supposed to be a part of every single conversation, and this conversation might not be best suited for you right now. You might be wondering, why are we even talking about this if you just said the most important thing is hitting your macros in the day? And while that is the first foundational step, we want to look at how we can optimize our results, and I know I am always trying to do whatever I can to take that next step forward. And it looks like so is God. If we optimize our peri-workout nutrition, we can have increased performance in the gym, we can have better recovery, we can have better muscle retention, and we can have better long-term results because we are supporting those other aspects. You might have heard before that training and nutrition go hand in hand, and I can confirm that they most definitely do, and especially in this dieting phase. And we're not just in a dieting phase, more specifically, we're in a fat loss phase. And there is a little bit of a difference between a fat loss phase and a weight loss phase. A weight loss phase, I'm just looking for the scale number to go down. But in a fat loss phase, I'm really just trying to lose fat and keep the hard earned muscle that I worked for. So while you can lose weight while manipulating your nutrition, this is where the training really comes into place, especially if you are going for that toned look, where having that toned look comes from building muscle and then losing the fat. So we're not only thinking about how we can have better training sessions sessions, but we want to think about how we can not only fuel those sessions, but also recover from them. So let's go ahead and dive into what you should even eat before you train and when you should eat that meal. Before a workout, we want to eat anywhere from two to four hours before. And with this meal, the further away you eat the meal, the bigger and denser that meal can be, and it can have some more fats and fiber. Fats and fiber are going to digest slower, so that doesn't mean it's bad, but we do need to be intentional about where we're putting it in our meals because let's say that you're about to train in an hour and you eat a meal with a ton of fat and fiber, that's still going to be digesting when you go into your session. Then when you go into your session, your body goes into fight or flight and that's what we want it to be in. But that means it's no longer in that rest and digest. So you're not digesting anything. And blood is actually pulled away from the stomach to go to other parts of your body so that you can train. And then that food is just sitting in your stomach. And you've probably heard the term, you're not what you eat. Eat, but you're what you digest. And if you're not digesting that food, then you're not able to truly use that for fuel. And it could be a little bit difficult to even train because it feels like there's a rock sitting in your stomach. What we recommend for the intake of the different macronutrients, those two to four hours before, is going to be 25 to 45 grams of protein. And this is going to be really dependent on how it breaks down in your meals overall and what your overall protein intake is and how it works within your digestion. But that 25 to 45 grams is going to be a really great range for your pre-workout meal. Then for your carbs, this is going to be a percentage. So we're looking for 20 to 30% of your carbs in that pre-workout meal and 5 to 15% of fats. But like I said, if you're in a situation where you're eating further away from your training session, that can be a bigger meal or maybe a little bit different distribution than these macros. I think people get pretty caught up in having like this perfect pre-workout or post-workout meal or seeing what's someone else's meal and I need to perfectly copy that, which we will give some different examples here of what our favorites are. Your favorite pre-workout meal, but it's really figuring out how it applies for your life and your schedule. If you regularly can only eat an hour before your training, this breakdown isn't going to work the best for you. Or maybe you can only train fasted and in the morning and there's no way in God's green earth you can get up early enough to eat a full meal and digest it before you go in to train before you have to go to work. So it's all about figuring out how it fits into your life while still optimizing your training. So let's talk about that fast 
fasted scenario. If you are training fasted in the morning before you go into work or before your day starts, there's a few different strategies that we utilize. Number one is going to be utilizing your meal, your last meal from the day before as your pre-workout meal for the morning. So just ensuring that your last meal, of course, still keeping it around two hours before you go to bed. So you do have time to digest it, but making it a more dense meal. So when you wake up, you feel ready to freaking go. It's not like you're eating your smallest meal right before you go to bed and then not eating in the morning and going multiple hours. Option two is going to be having something quick and easy before you go into your training. Now, this, of course, won't make it fasted anymore, but I'm really using this as an example for how it fits into your schedule, not necessarily diving into if you should or shouldn't stay fasted. Maybe you are waking up a little bit before you go to the gym and you feel like you can stomach a tiny bit of food going with something like a protein shake and some fruit or some rice cakes as all of those are going to digest pretty fast and give you that fuel for your session. Option two B here is to ixnay the protein shake because maybe you really don't feel like that can sit well in your stomach that early in the morning and trying to get that in before you go to the gym. And so you just go with having some quick carbs like some rice cakes or some fruit. Option three is actually one I like to utilize quite a bit and that's going to be having some carbs during my workout. So I mentioned peri workout includes what you do before, during, and after. So we're going to talk about that during bit. Don't think that you have to be eating all different kinds of food or that you even have to have an intro workout. Most of the time, this isn't necessary, especially if you're not in a deficit, but it can be helpful if you are at maintenance and surplus and you need to get in some extra calories. This can be a really easy way to do it. What we're looking for in an intra drink or food, I do prefer to use a drink because it is going to digest faster and just touching things in the gym and then touching things and put it in your mouth is not my cup of tea. We're looking for sugar or simple carbs. In other words, something that's going to digest fast so that we can use that energy. But even fast digesting sugars can take 15 to 30 minutes to be absorbed to utilize for fuel. So just make sure that you're timing those correctly. I mentioned I like to utilize intro workout and it's not always because I'm training fasted in the morning and I want to have those carbs during my workout. A thing that I often use it for actually is when I've eaten and I plan to work out a certain time, life happened, and now I'm getting to the point where I should probably eat again, but I don't really have the time to eat, wait for that to digest, and then go and train. So I'll utilize intra carbs in that place so I can just get through my session and then be able to make sure that I'm really focusing on that post-workout meal. Oh, Gus is like, oh, <laughs> that's not for you. I thought that it would fit. <laughs> Looks like I put ball pads on. Are these even? That's what she Not said. <laughs> That's what she said. Now it's choking. It literally looks like I got <laughs> ball pads on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And that post-workout meal, the breakdown is gonna be pretty similar to that pre-workout meal where we're looking for the 30 to 45 grams of protein. For our carbs, this is gonna be 30 to 50% of your carb intake and fats are gonna be around that five to 15% again. One huge pro tip that I love to share with clients is waiting until your heart rate gets within five to 10 beats of your resting heart rate before you eat. It is so easy to leave a workout be starving and just scarf down your food immediately. And you might feel like you have quite a stomach ache after that. So I always like to recommend waiting for that heart rate to get down. Now I know you've probably heard also of this anabolic window and you need to immediately slam a protein shake as you put down your last weight or you will not see progress but there's actually quite a bit of research showing that that window of that 30 or 40 minutes that people have thought is actually a lot bigger. So we really recommend to get that meal in within two to four hours. And I try to push clients to closer to that too, but also understanding life happens, scheduling can be a little bit crazy. But again, we wanna think about for pre and post-workout to be within two to four hours. 
TDLR, prioritize your overall calories and macros in any given day. Number two is going to be really prioritizing protein and carbs around your training as that's going to help with, like I talked about, that toning and being able to give you that energy. And it's even more important in a deficit because your glycogen stores are lower and or empty, so you do need those carbs for fuel. And number three, eating your food within a two to four hour window on either side is a pretty safe bet. Nailing down your perfect pre and post workout meals may take some time once you figure out what works best for your digestion, what allows you to have the best energy and what meals you just frankly enjoy. But let's go find out what Alex's favorite pre-workout meal is. Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question? Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Uh, Hi. Thank you. What can you. What can I answer for you? What is your favorite pre-workout meal, your go-to pre-workout meal? Mm. I love some sweet and sour chicken with some rice and a whole lot of salt. Why is that your favorite pre-workout meal? Because sodium is for all the pumps and give me a big old glass of water too so I get the juiciest of pumps for my workout. And what is your favorite uh, pre-workout meal? Chicken and rice. Why do you like eating chicken and rice pre-workout? Gotta get my protein in. And your carbs? Yeah, and the carbs too. What is your favorite pre-workout meal? Ooh, well... Depending on the time of day I train, I like just fruits. A bobo, a bobo bar, they're just like oatmeal bars. Gray for breakfast, and if it's in the evening, rice, ground turkey, something easy to digest. Why do you like eating those meals pre-workout? Convenience, really. Do they give you good fuel? Do you feel like they sit well within your digestion? Oh yeah, great fuel, great pumps, great energy. And that's Sue with the Physique Development News. <laughs> Back to you, Alex. I have a question for you, bring it on. <laughs> You're so, will you marry me? <laughs> Please. I beg you, marry me. Please. I'm so I'm married. Yes. Please. Oh, Please. I'm married. Oh. I have a guard dog and I'm married. <laughs> uh, there's no way I train back. I'm going to die because I tr just trained back yesterday. What are you mixing up there, Alex? I am mixing up my pre-workout. I'm about to train with my friend, Seth who is here so in town. And uh, this is actually his first time visiting us, so I'm super excited. We're about to train legs. It is 5 p.m. and this late into the evening, there is no reason to be taking any caffeine. Now, Seth works third shift, is a police officer. He needs a little bit of caffeine. This is an exception to the rule because if he doesn't get it, he's gonna fall asleep on us. Thus, I'm going to be going with a non-stem pre-workout. And this is just going to have salt. This is going to have L-citrulline, nitrogestine, things that are going to enhance the pump overall. Also, something that you want to add is more salt to make sure that you're having an electrolyte balance as well as enhance the pumps and the contractions that you're having. The last thing that I want to add is that you want to have your pre-workout 30 to 40 minutes before your training session, not as you're walking into the gym, to allow for those ingredients to digest and actually give you the benefit that is listed on these bottles. Week five is a wrap and what a week that it was. Uh, this is a, a week that could have very easily been a, a time where we threw in the towel because things were chaotic. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, we had Coach Courtney in town as well as some work being done here at the house and um, a lot of excuses that could have been made and a lot of days that were situations in which it was just wake up and crank all the way to the end of the day get ready for bed and sign up to do it again the next day and just continue to push forward. So it was a challenging week and you can probably see it in my face. I look probably a little exhausted because I feel exhausted, but that's the reality of the situation. And I'm really proud of us for keeping to our word and keeping to our nutritional intake and, and to our training and all those different things. Was it perfect? No, I, I, I wouldn't call it a perfect week, but damn it, we gave it our best effort and I'm really proud of us for what we brought to the table. I think a big reason that we decided to do this together was because life is so insane. And if only one of us had the goals that we have right now, it would make it so extremely difficult to stick to the plan and keep doing it. But I also think that everything that we've put in place within our routine and our schedule and being proactive allows us to have craziness like this because I can't even imagine going through a week like this week and not having our food prepared, not having a plan for when we are gonna get steps in and not having you to lean on or you to have me to lean on on those days where it just felt like I cannot 
do another task, but I knew that you were right there by my side. This was the first week that my weight was not linear. Now, I understood because of the circumstances in which how my body felt and how at times lackluster my sleep was, that I knew that I wasn't actually making less progress or that I was somehow all of a sudden gaining body fat. It was simply a matter of understanding that my body was very overworked and it was just the circumstance that was at hand. And so I had to stay very diligent to what I knew was the game plan for the week. And I hope going into this next week that I see the scale trends that I want to see uh, moving forward. I know we've both mentioned it in past videos, but as I said in last video, my cycle was starting at the end of the week. So it continued and finished up and the scale weight did rise. And we ended up putting together a few different photo comparisons just to really reiterate to myself more than anything of the progress is there. And it can be really hard when the scale is the only metric that you rely on. So it's been so helpful to be able to look at myself in clothes, be able to just see my body and recognize it does look different. And then of course, being able to compare those pictures has been a huge help. It was also really fun with Courtney being in town that we got to get in some different types of movement. Now, not only did we do some chores and had to get some stuff out of the garage, which we'll go ahead and insert a clip of us trying to move our fridge to make sure that the garage flooring could go down. But actually Miguel, Courtney and I were able to go to a dance lesson on Saturday. I gave the team a a challenge to go ahead and have a hobby that they've always wanted to do and to finally do it. And Courtney, Miguel, and I all had the goal of dance. So it was so much fun to go ahead after a really hard and demanding week to be able to go and dance and just have some fun there. With dancing and just the craziness of the week, I did decide to purposely get less steps on Saturday because I felt that I just needed recovery recovery above everything else. We did train together with Courtney and we were really emphasizing training till failure. And I friggin' did that for sure. I felt so sore after that session and just everything that happened. So it was great to be able to dance, move my body in a little bit different way. We were able to go on some walks, but then just be able to relax and go see a movie on Sunday and take some time. It is time for me to go train legs. Make sure that you drop your favorite post for workout meal in the comments and we'll catch you in the next episode. Oh. <laughs> See ya. See ya. See ya.